I'm Claude Warnick. Uh, I'm a lecturer here, joint between the Department of Applied Maths and Theoretical Physics and the Department for Pure Maths and Mathematical Statistics. Could you tell us a little bit about your work? Uh, so I work on partial differential equations and general relativity. Um, partial differential equations are equations that uh, describe how some physical quantity usually um, varies depending on um, two or more uh, continuous quantities. So for example, you could imagine the, the temperature in some rod. Um, if we heat it up and let it uh, cool down, then the temperature will depend on the position in the rod and also the time. So it will vary continuously uh, in terms of those two things. Um, another example might be the, uh, the gas in this room. Um, the air moves around, it has a temperature, there's lots of complicated phenomena going on. Um, but if we imagine that it's fairly still, then one phenomenon that's uh, particularly interesting uh, is the phenomenon of sound waves. So obviously the fact you can, uh, you can hear me is down to the fact that uh, sound waves are propagating through the air in the room. Uh, and there's a particular uh, partial differential equation that describes this um, called the wave equation. So the, the equations that I'm most interested in are wave equations and equations similar to the equation describing sound in the room. Um, the reason I'm interested in these comes from uh, questions to do with general relativity. So this is our, our theory to describe the gravitational field. Uh, and one of the most interesting things about this theory, it has lots of uh, interesting phenomena associated to it, but one of the interesting things about it is that it's very similar in character to uh, the, the wave equation that describes sound. So in particular, um, fairly recently, in the last uh, couple of years or so, uh, there have actually been um, concrete measurements measuring gravitational waves. So these are, if you like, the, the equivalent for gravity of sound waves um, propagating through a gas or something like that. So my research is in the kind of equations that link these phenomena in the, uh, the wave equations and also problems to do with uh, gravity and general relativity. So you mentioned you were a lecturer on a joint appointment between the Department of Pure Mathematics and Mathematical Statistics and the Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics. So could you describe in a little more detail why your work crosses into both pure mathematics and theoretical physics? Um, well, in, in some ways, the, the boundary between the two is not an absolute thing. Um, and in different places, actually, it's drawn in, different, uh, in a different place. So, I've worked in the past in some physics departments, in some pure mathematics departments, uh, and the kind of work I'm interested in um, sort of naturally has some aspects which are pure mathematical. So the study in particular of partial differential equations, you know, one has to, to do a fair amount of analysis, one wants to prove uh, rigorous theorems where possible. Um, on the other hand, obviously, if the questions you're interested in are things like, um, you know, how black holes behave or uh, how gravitational radiation propagates through the universe. These are very physical questions. So it's, it's very natural to, to, to sort of have a foot in both camps, as it were. Do you think that the blurring of the boundary between pure mathematics and theoretical physics, is that a recent phenomenon? Um, well, I think it sort of goes back and forwards a bit. So if you go back as, you know, way into the distant past of uh, of Newton and so on before even the kind of notion of mathematics as a discrete subject came up, um, then there was a very natural back and forward between um, pure maths and uh, sort of physics ideas. Um, I suppose the more recently um, there's been a bit of a more kind of uh, rigid divide, but I think it's uh, a very natural thing to blur the lines and I think there have always been people um, who've worked on both sides of, of the boundary. Do you think that such a joint lectureship is of benefit to the faculty as a whole? Again, one of the things that, uh, that I think about this, this difference between pure and, uh, and applied maths is that you know, the boundary is, is not a rigid line. Um, and I think, you know, in particular for teaching and things like this, there's a lot of value in being able to draw on aspects from lots of different places. I think when trying to explain a concept, you know, the more different ways you can explain something, the more ways you can link it to other, uh, other parts of mathematics, the better and the better chance that students have of understanding. So from the, from the point of view of teaching, I think it's actually uh, quite a valuable thing to be able to link the two, uh, the two departments. 
So what's the most exciting recent development in your field? Um, well, for me personally, I think the most uh, exciting recent development is the direct measurement of gravitational waves. Um, so you know, this is something that had been uh, conjectured for, for many decades, um, and only now have we got direct experimental evidence to, to show that these things exist. Uh, and it's a really exciting um, time because it opens a, a window on gravitational physics, a window on the universe. Uh, and I think there'll be a tremendous amount of interesting data coming out of these uh, kind of experiments in the near future. So I'm really uh, looking forward to, to where this discovery goes in the next few years.